Members, we resume the address and deploy, reply debate. When we adjourned, Paul Foster Bell had the call. He has seven minutes and 14 seconds remaining, should he care to advantage himself of that opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And, sir, Paul as Foster I was saying Bell. before the dinner break, I congratulate you on your appointment to the Deputy Speakership of this House. You, sir, are a very fair-minded and learned gentleman and a distinguished member of uh, the National Caucus, but I, will, I know you will apply your fairness and judgment and uh, balance and even-handedness uh, to a superb degree when managing the affairs of this very important House. <laughs> Sir, before the dinner break, I was talking about the Wellington Central electorate, the excellent party vote result achieved by National, but also some of the interesting things that are going on here. During the campaign, I was up at the Maligan Institute and saw some of the fascinating research that they're doing into, uh, among other things, uh, results involving asthma, actually effectively a cure for asthma sufferers, but also the very important issue of melanoma, which is something suffered by many New Zealanders due to the environmental conditions we live in in this country. Sir, there's an old Chinese curse that says we live in interesting times, and sadly around the world we can see this played out, including in some of the regions I served in as a New Zealand diplomat in the Middle East, where we have the scourge of sectarianism, we have the threat of terrorism, and some of that even uh, threatens to spill over into our relatively quiet corner of the world. So I'm proud to be part of a, a government which takes the security of this realm incredibly seriously and proud to be uh, working for a Prime Minister who's outlined a number of measures that he would wish to take. Sir, in terms of international affairs, may I thank uh, all members of this House who have this evening endorsed me as the Pacific Regional Delegate to the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. Just this week we had a, a visit from our Fijian counterparts and I think we would all join together in welcoming them back into the fold of the Commonwealth. It's fantastic to have such an important regional partner uh, back involved uh, inside the tent, as it, as it were. And I'm looking forward to engaging with all members and, and furthering the cause of poverty eradication and uh, corruption reduction and also those other important capacity building, particularly governance capacity building activities that New Zealand and this House can contribute to in the Parliament. Sir, one last thing. This is the debate in reply to uh, the speech delivered by Her Majesty's representative. I think it would be remiss of this House not to have on the record somewhere um, congratulations to Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cambridge on conceiving the second in line to be heir to the heir to the throne of New Zealand. It's a wonderful thing as we, as we debate uh, the flag and other issues, but it's a wonderful thing that, and it's part of the tradition of this country that we are free of corruption, and part of that, I think, is thanks to the fact we have a politically neutral, uncorruptible, dutiful head of state in Her Majesty the Queen. Um, so I take great pleasure, sir, in uh, adding my voice of support to others who have moved the motion in support of that speech. Thank you, sir. Yeah, well said. Well said. Uh, I call the honourable member Chris Farfoy. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.